Uh, our next presenter, I mean, she could come up here and just like pass out and you'd still appreciate her because she's a public school teacher. <laughs> or, or let's revisit a comedy night phrase, or was until she quit her job just a few months ago. And because she some stuff that bugged her and she did this big, awesome, human, courageous thing and started her own company to help out kids and fill the gaps where she saw that maybe the schools weren't helping. Well, I'm not gonna give you too much, she can do it for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please get up for Heather Kernay. I'm so excited. Uh, I have known that I wanted to be a teacher since I was 11 years old. My rapport with little kids was obvious to me even when everything else in my world was pretty awkward and insecure, little kids just made sense to me. And that was a role that fits me well. <laughs> I have this sixth sense for noticing things like haircuts and new shirts and lost teeth. And in return, I receive all the musings of young kids and they are masters at keeping it real, let me assure you. <laughs> now, from time to time, my teacher role does spill over into my home I have been known to ask my husband, are you sure that's a choice you wish to make? <laughs> <laughs> so I loved them, and they loved me very much. I found my calling, I was hitting my stride, it's the goal of every career, right? So why did I do the most unexpected thing? Why did I leave public education? Well, the truth is, there was this gnawing feeling that was keeping me from my sleep because I was worried about the well-being of the students that I loved so much, because I knew that all over the country, even in my own classroom, students are being asked to do things that are developmentally inappropriate for many of them. <laughs> now, teachers are asking this because of a top-down pressure. You want federal and state money for education? Earn it with test scores. Now, we have decades of research that tells us how children's brains develop and learn. And it's unequivocally agreed upon that young children especially learn best through play. Play targets the whole child, and it just creates a generally well-rounded person. Plus, Mr. Rogers says it, so it simply is so. When children play, their, brains, their brain cells grow. Uh, their memory is stimulated, and it's just an awesome thing for them. And teachers know this. This is why so many teachers strive to create classrooms that are very collaborative and hands-on. Teachers are awesome, and they are not part of this problem. But educators are not calling the shots. <laughs> Public education is big business. Standardized tests and the mountains of test prep materials that accompany them cost a ton. And we are basically paying for a billion dollar snapshot of students, teachers, schools, and districts. Is it Common Core? <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> Some people think so. I actually think that those standards are pretty great and it's more the interpretation and application of the standards that are a problem. So here's a true story. In February of 2012, I had to give my third grade students the reading TCAP test here in Colorado. This was the test designed to measure how well I taught and how well my students learned the standards for the whole year in February. So please understand that teachers are not afraid of accountability, nor do they have any problem with high expectations of students. If you're gonna be responsible for other people's kids, that's part of the gig. It is when that accountability flies in the face of what's developmentally appropriate for kids that we have a problem. That problem is even worse when <laughs> test scores are tied to student or teacher pay. So this creates this overwhelming pressure to prepare students for standardized tests. And this is gonna be super overwhelming for some kids and other kids rail against the system. The curriculum is essentially moved up a year and kindergarten is the new first grade. So what's a better way? Well, one option is to create digital portfolios for students to track their growth across a year or several years, and this can be done for all content areas. Birth to three programs have also been proven to increase math, literacy, and social skills in the future. 
and they're pretty good at mitigating some environmental factors that are tough on, on kids. This next one is actually very close to my heart because I tried to implement it in the school where I was working. What about a supplemental year of schooling in between kindergarten and first grade? This is not a retention, but rather an opportunity for kids to shore up any gaps in learning that they have with math, reading, and social skills. Let's make sure they're ready before we make them move on. Now, whether or not you have kids, or despite your political leanings, this is something that we all have to deal with. Eventually, we're all gonna pass this ship along. My goal is to put people at the helm that can think critically, problem solve, and see the world through a broader lens. I'm Heather Crenay, and I believe in children. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Take a big leap.